Hello, I'm Matthew Armstrong. Let's draw a pumpkin ghost. Mm -hmm. Here is... Oh, you're not a pumpkin ghost, you're another drawing. Oh yeah, okay. So, I drew this little thumbnail. It's not a thumbnail, so it's quite bigger than my thumbnail. But I drew a little sketch of um, what I thought I'd want to draw. Today's Inktober prompt is plump. So I drew a little plump uh, pumpkin, that pumpkin ghost. So pumpkin ghost, he's not a pumpkin, but he meets a real pumpkin and it's gigantic. And it goes for a little ride. Let's see. So I'll just put this over here. I'll just very lightly with a pencil. Ticonderoga. This is a Ticonderoga 2 HB soft. So any soft lead will do. Um, these are really cool. Can you find these maybe at the grocery store or wherever you are? But they also put out, what did I say that? Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. Dixion. Ticonderoga. Go to Ticonderoga. Grab a pencil. Um, but they also do these My First pencils, which are huge. And isn't that fun? Makes you feel like a kindergartner again. You know, like early school person again. This is mostly about a plump pumpkin. So most of this will be filled with our plump pumpkin. So a funny thing about um, proportions and stuff like that, if you want this pumpkin to feel really big, you know, first you have kind of a normal size guy next to him, and that will be a scale relationship. That will be a, a scale cue that will make it really big. You can put something recognizable here, like maybe a tombstone or something like that. Um, you know, all, all these things will help make him look big. And then um, I'm thinking I'm actually going to go further, but you make the... The body will be really quite big, you know, as big as the whole thing, but you make the face really, really small and a small face on a large mass, on a large body. That's going to communicate to your audience. Um, Whoa, this guy's, this guy's huge. So if you want to make like a big muscly guy, just give him like a, a small little face head and all of a sudden, um, bam, he's huge, you know. So I'm actually going to try to make the face smaller than I made it here. So paying attention to where the center of the uh, of the sphere is about here you want to um, I want to put the face well below it. This one will be a circle and then this one see it's going it's going across the sphere like that. And then we have a very, very small face, but a very happy, almost childlike face. Just barely touching the paper. Have it ready for ink. Maybe it's a bit more of a crookedy mouth. Anyway, I don't want to define it too much because I want to do that at the inking stage. Little jack o' lantern teeth. Might need a little bit more of an edge there. All right, not, not too bad, not too shabby. Follow the, the curve, the curvature. Then maybe the stem, kind of like the face being smaller. If I make the stem smaller, I think that will communicate that this is actually quite a big plump pumpkin boy. Big plump boy. Yes. All right, I like it. Let's um, figure out where these legs are. 
Like their little feet should help make them look sort of plumper. Plumpity plumpity plump. Plumpity pumpkin. These are find out lines, sketch lines, you know, the, your initial construction. They're helpful to find out where to put things, but they're not helpful at the very end of the final read. Like they might confuse your audience, so you might get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, is a, that is a plump pumpkin. Mostly good about that, mostly. Okay, and a little adventure, pumpkin ghost. You probably shouldn't be too much bigger than that eyeball there. Giving this more of a rounded edge instead of a, a pinched edge. I hope that the rounded edge will help it make cute. Cute is rounded, you know, like baby, chubby baby. Uh, more serious gets, the more serious something is, the more pointed angles it has. So you remove pointed angles and you're going to get something a lot more cute and friendly. Also, having this be a curve will help it um, contrast it against the the teeth, which are actually polygonal. They are, uh, you know, they have um, points. There we go. I think that will work. See the inside of the jack o' lantern just a bit. to figure out these interior lines here. I want to show the pumpkin, but I don't, I don't want to over render it. You know, I want to keep it simple. The less lines, the better. I do want to give a little bit of texture, so. Let's take out what's not working, what we don't need. Let's see how little, let's see how few lines we can get away with. <laughs> Try like a... If you want something to look in motion, go ahead and you don't have to have it touching the ground. It's moving so fast that actually above the ground. I'm just kind of tracing, just tracing what, you know, the, so here's the ground. And I like to just run my pencil over its geometry. See? And the more scribble lines I make, you know, I kind of start really finding that geometry. The lines are going to bunch up here towards the edge of the contour. There's gonna be a shadow cast by Plump Pumpkin. Plumpy, just call him Plumpy. Plumpy the Pumpkin. All right, um, yeah, and he's in a kind of an old graveyard, so. You probably only have to do one or two gravestones to sell that it's a, a graveyard that he's in. 
One of those old timey graveyards. Pumpkin Ghost. Pumpkin Ghost, uh, most simple character you can really probably do is the keyhole shape. You can start with the keyhole shape and uh, you can end up with a cute character. Every time. It is great. Let's see, this is line of action. He's being pulled along. He's got a little hand attached to Blimpy's stem. Kind of cutting into my sketching, my sketch there to really define the shapes. Going a little polygonal like that. And then back to the keyhole shape, see, circle. Triangle stuck into the circle. Keyhole shape. Works every time. He's smiling. Rarely do we see pumpkin ghosts. Adorable smile, but we do. Because he's so happy about be able to find a ride to get him along on his journey. Fast travel unlocked. Pumpkin's sticking up this way, so there's the stem. This comes down here. I like to break it up just a little bit at the bottom. That's a bunch of leaves, I think. All right. So this is a cold press watercolor. has a wonderful, beautiful texture. It takes watercolor or Mont Black Oyster Gray ink. Uh, it takes it really, really well when it dries. It's just beautiful. Um, but the pencil uh, grains and, and they like to get everywhere. So, um, but maybe we like smudges. Maybe we like some some pencil grain here and there. So I'll try to leave it as clean as possible, but it doesn't have to be super clean. Because those marks will be fun too. I'm just going to leave this cross hatching here to remind myself to make these areas spot black. That is completely, completely black. I'll use that Mont, Mont Black Ink. Okay. It looks like there's a little more room for a little bit of texture. Maybe he's like one of those old crumbly, cruddly, grubbly pumpkins that nobody wants to buy at the store, but we do. We want to buy you, don't we? It's going to be okay. Okay, so there's pumpkin ghost. Uh, let's see. There's a little kitty ghost trying to keep up. Let's see how we did. So this is the original sketch. I just grabbed the back of a bill, a not too scary bill, and uh, scribbled on it. And uh, rather than using my sketchbook, which is what I should have done. I'll put this stem a little further back. See here in the sketch, I had a big giant moon behind him, but I drew it so big there's no there's no room for a moon, so we'll omit that. You know, it's just as important to what to leave out as what to put in. Okay, 
I think I can put, find some fun, appealing places for texture lines. But can't get too dark. Anyway, so we're emitting the moon. Um, we want to cluster stars. See these little stars around here. So uh, you don't want to just put them anywhere. Not not too randomly. Like think in your head. Divide this thing into thirds. You know, and think about clustering these stars in an appealing way. That's sort of. will lead your eye into that. You can even think of like a circle eight. Circle eight seems to work for this. And I'll just make marks right now and then I'll actually draw the star uh, with the ink. There's no reason to... I want to leave a little bit of fun for the inking part. Okay, so um, I forget which ink is waterproof and which isn't. A lot. So this is ink from different pens and I'm just going to... Okay, so <laughs> this pen right here, not waterproof. UPS guy. What up, ups man? We call UPS the brown sand around here. He brings us goods. All right, this is a zebra, you know, bendy, almost a brush pen, but it's really just got a tip that has a lot of thick to thin. So we'll use you and I'll just kind of be really loose and just have a lot of fun now. This guy is a little bit dry, so he makes kind of a really fun scumbly little line, you see. So I'm kind of excited to use that. Now the texture of this cold pressed paper is interacting with the ink and just, you know, adding to the, the line craziness, the line character. The line on top, next to the light, I'm gonna go by this rule. The line next to the, the light up here, it's quite thin. The line underneath, by contrast, quite thick, as if the shadow is gathering. Gathering on the underside, as shadows tend to do. I'll try a little cross hatching there. This is a little bit dry brushy because of the pen's getting old, so it's kind of brushy and crumbly, which is kind of cool. All right, very good. Thick to thin, scumble around. Kind of letting the wine be or the line be a little a little wild. Which is fun to do on something that's just so big. Actually gives it um a lot of detail, which also hopefully add to scale cues and the information that will make your mind go, hey, that's quite a large thing. It's quite a large object there. The tip of this pen is so interesting. It bends and folds. It's fun to experiment and kind of find out what it can do, what kind of marks you can get. If you find a mark that you like, you can reuse it later. Let's see, I, wanna, I think I'll finish 
the important parts of Plumpkin here. Before I go to Pumpkin Ghost, just in case this thing runs out. <laughs> you don't want it to run out when I'm not quite finished, so. Once you have it all figured out in pencil, then the... But not too figured out in pencil, because you want to still have fun, but once you have it all kind of figured out and proportioned, and then you can let your mind just slowly focus. Just only worry about, you know, stroke control, line economy, thick to thin texture, you know, all, all sort of fun, pretty stuff. Trying to get better at drawing straight, just not skipping the pencil and just going straight to pen. There are masters who can really do that. I am not very good at that yet. But it's something I'd like to be able to do really well one day. it as the shape the form rotates underneath plumpkin shadows begin to gather the cross hatching that's where it lives so it's going to start showing up quite a lot here some of the pencils really smudging into the the cold press watercolor and when it mixes with the watercolor, give it kind of a nice grungy, uh, add a lot of grungy fun textures. You go like big strokes like that, and then here in the corners, that's where the little shadows gather. So just accent. That area. I'm trying not to think about this too hard, you know, I'm trying to just be in, listen to the blue note, be in the alpha wave brain state. Have it, just have fun, let it flow. Definitely not worried about things like making a bad mark or what if that doesn't work or those voices are relatively quiet at the moment and I'm grateful for that. You might have some little chunks coming out of his, his mouth. Oh, I forgot the back feet. Imagine the feet and the legs being made of um, some kind of stem stuff. Uh, what do you call it? Pumpkin. You know, the green, the vines. Yeah, made, made out of vines somehow that have found their way somehow to connecting to the, um, to the pumpkin. But we won't worry too much about 
how they're connected or anything like that. The silhouette is what's really important. What, you know, just that it reads is a pumpkin with legs. We don't really have to explain why visually, not, not with cartooning, not with something, you know, this simple and fun. If we were drawing like a mainstream comic or something, we are making a concept for video games or, you know, CG movie, you might want to worry about how these connect a lot more. We are unburdened by such worryful things. There's something as fun as Pumpkin Ghost. I'm gonna push this back in shadow. Guess the toes go too. And there's maybe some little chunks. This kind of helps show motion. I'm worrying about the edge of the silhouette. Just editing it a little bit so it reads his toes a little better. All right, I don't want to get too carried away here. Trying to get too carried away, and then what do I do? I absolutely get carried away. <laughs> Excuse me. Just using the very tippy top of this pens, this pen here, laying it in really light, barely touching it. Gonna make the line thicker here at the corner of the sphere of the circle, just so it gives it a little weight and pops it so you can see it you know on something like your phone when this is going to be quite quite small this is final destination this you're gonna see it quite small so choosing how to define that with the thickness of the lines definitely using your best judgment your best guess don't worry though, you know, you know what to do. Let's see inside of the eyes. And then maybe just a small, small indicator of those ridges, pumpkin ridges. It would probably show up on the, the edge. Let's see another thing I like. So I'm going to shade it just a little bit. I'm just going to add a little bit of cross hatching where the shadows gather right around here, but very lightly. There we go. That's enough. Uh, his hand. Remember when I said you don't really have to worry about how it connects? The other fun thing about cartoon characters, especially ones with big heads, you know, they're like two or three heads tall, like Pumpkin Ghost here. Um, their arms stretch. 
all you really have to say, all you have to do is just put the arm where it needs to go. And don't worry about that it's probably a lot longer than it should be, because it is, but it's a cartoon. Which means it can squash and it can stretch. Imagine this a cloak being made of little leaves. Don't draw every leaf. I just wanna just wanna give it just enough that you think, oh that's organic, that might be made of something crumply and crinkly, like leaves. Where's the other arm? It's in the it's in the thanks for asking. Where's this other arm? It's in the cloak. Obviously. That's right, it's that kind of cloak. You know, a single arm kind. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let that dry before I erase it. Nothing's worse than trying to erase pencils and it's not dry and oof. I wish that didn't happen to me anymore. Press down hard, press down hard and just drag towards yourself. See this little tiny line is thick on top and then on the bottom. Okay, stars. This is fun. Just kind of vaguely star shapes and leaving some lines undrawn. Some lines are just really you now there's lost bits of the line, which helps the starlight come out of the confines of the confines of the line drawing. Even though it's just black and white ink, there are ways and techniques to to have it be so much more. Your imagination. The viewer's imagination, the viewer's mind will kind of see the rough guesstimate of what's in front of it, right? And through closure, through the mind looking at the, the, the line work and closure between, you know, that jump between what's here and what happens in your imagination. Um, that's real, that's the real magic, you know, that's where um, it becomes more than just a little line and it's got starlight. That's where the interior of this, this, um, pumpkin, you know, this plumpkin, that's where the light comes out. You know, you can feel the light hitting the pumpkin and gathering into shadows down here. That's the principle of closure. What you make, what you draw, and what your audience sees. And the more you draw, the more you can sort of anticipate what an audience will see and anticipate what an audience needs, what they'll find appealing to communicate your ideas better. You know, when I have thoughts like this, I should write them down so they come out. So they come out a lot more succinctly. Maybe this is a fun way to talk about things too. All right, just one little part to go, but first, before I forget. These extra big pencils have extra nice big erasers. I need to get in there. Maybe a smaller eraser. 
you know, I barely touch the paper because I don't want the pencil to get all, you know, squeezed in there. So if I just am patient and I run the eraser lightly on the paper, back and forth, back and forth. All that lead will be swept up, gathered into little tiny eraser threads and easily brushed off. Okay, let's go for Mike McNola's favorite pen, the Stadler Pigment Liner 0.03. You look at a Hellboy drawing, you'll think, wow, those are really thin lines, you know, especially in all the background objects. So we're going to borrow that trick and use really thin lines back here. And then that will help make the background, push it back, make it look like it's out of focus, like in a, a cinema, you know, like in, in the movies, you know, the background's out of focus. It's kind of blurred up, which makes the actors which presents the actors really well. We're gonna to try to use that same principle to present the Plumpkin. And his new friend, Pumpkin Ghost. Sometimes on the edge of these stone things, uh, there'll be a, you know, a chip, you know, or maybe a little cut, but there's wear and tear on the edges. So that's a really good place to put these little toots. If I remember the correct name for them, because of course there is one, I'll say it, but it's not coming to mind right now. I don't need to trace every one of these lines. In fact, I sh probably shouldn't because we really just need enough, enough of these lines. Enough just to say this is a old rumbly, crumbly, bumpy graveyard. gonna really be able to see the, the lines on the edge so we'll, we'll find those first. And once we've defined those then any extra lines we need past that that will be made apparent to us. Just like all art one of the important things background to foreground big to small, light to black, or black to light, or dark to light. I always forget which way it goes, but really, handle just one thing at a time. Or it's an evolution, it's, it's a process. Get this part working. And it kind of defines how that part works. And if that way is like that way, then this way should be like that way. Symbiotic. Evolutionary progress. That's a real term now. 
I just made it up myself. I'm worrying about the silhouette first, and then I'll go in and get the rest of those lines. Getting some of these interiors figured out. <laughs> Let's see, I want it to be a little bit grassy, so we'll put in a little couple of tufts. One, two, three. 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 been so good we can do a lot of scribbling because now we got to do the shadow of the pumpkin the shadow of the pumpkin sounds like a good horror movie title the shadow of the pumpkin starts Friday now a major motion picture event because it's never a minor motion picture event I guess movie trailers don't really do that anymore. In a world where a pumpkin is really big, pumpkin ghosts will find out that there's more to being a pumpkin than just being a cute pumpkin. Yeah. Okay, I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna cross hatch it. I kind of, I don't think of it like straight lines or anything like that. I think of cross hatches as filling a circle and then I cluster the, those circles together. And I find that's a lot more appealing than, you know, rigidly following a grid, circles versus squares. So. You know, it's like, a, this could talk about. Okay. So here's cross hatching. That's a square, right? And that that serves, you know, if you do a castle wall, you have to definitely use a square cityscape. You bet anything is a square, but this is organic. This is a bunch of of um you know graveyard stuff stuck together. So if it's organic, I want or an organic shape, see? It's like a circle. There we go. Small circle. And the more you cluster these together, it adds to the texture, it adds to the shape, the contour lines, you know, it communicates to your viewer, you know, what's going on, what kind of ground this is. So I'm thinking about filling in circles without actually drawing the circles. It's a little trick. Thank you. 
think there's a couple of flowers on the ground. Maybe they're just those kind of wheat flowers, but still flowers nonetheless. Very simple flower as a circle. A little line in the middle of the circle. Hey, how about that? Okay, I want to just clean up some of this pencil a little bit in the places where it's not helpful. Now, if there's a shadow, that pencil can stay. But if it needs to be glowing from the inside, like right here, pencil's got to go. Get him, eraser. Get that pencil. Sometimes I go to the fridge and get like a, a drink or something out and I leave my pen or pencil in the fridge and then I get back to my desk and I go, where did you go? And it you know, kind of drives me late, crazy and I freak out just a little bit. Um, so that's not going to happen now. That's not what I'm doing now. That just happens to, to a friend. That happens to a friend of mine. I've heard that happens, can happen to people. Okay, signature. find the other pencil. I'll use this one. Hey, works great. Okay. Oh, got to take one of these. Okay, now, now for the really fun part. Mont Black Oyster Gray. It's kind of a watered down ink, but it's, it can still get really dark if you let it. And I love that because it can get dark. I can even darken it in Photoshop if I need to. But um, but it actually lets the the line show through. Let me see. This is kind of a nice medium brush. See, okay, it's to a this one gets to a really good point. It's a silver black velvet, number eight. So we're going to use that to do our spot blacks. Remember when I said spot blacks back at the beginning? I don't. I'm not sure I, I did, but I think I might have. But you probably remember better than I do. Anyway, spot blacks. I'll just fill them in. great about this cold press paper that's what gives watercolor its look you know is the edges the edges of these these marks and these spot blasts the edges on this cold press you have this crinkly you know fuzzy kind of kind of line fuzzy kind of edge Probably hard to see on a screen <laughs> what I'm talking about. But in the real world, as you make your own art, oh, it's right there. You can see it. Hard to replicate, even on a awesome iPad. Though I do love working on iPad.
Okay, I might just risk a few more. Dark areas here. Having some black areas be around the shadows makes sense. Having things be silhouetted in the background, that makes sense. Okay, and then we can add some water to it. And now we're moving past just black and white, and we're going to add a third, four fifths values because once we got all this defined and it's kind of working then it'd be really hard to screw up the rest of it it's like it, it has a structure it has a frame you know it's, these are the skeletal bones that will make the rest of the illustration work you know i was thinking about going in and doing the background but i'm not so sure I think, I think I actually might do both of my ideas. What are my ideas? Well, um, I'll try to describe it as I go along here. But with watercolor, you know, there's a real time element. You gotta go fast. So I might not be able to describe everything the way I want to. Just for a second. Neighbor's home. If I darken this area, it will help make the, um, hey, what are you? Oh, you're, you're an ink line. That was a piece of eraser for a second. Now you can scumble along and be adding some texture. I'm leaving a bit of a rim light. The brush is a little dry, so I can kind of I can use that to stamp and add texture. adding dark accents to where the shadows gather most. Don't want to over-render this. There's really no reason to. I made that a little too dark, so I'm looking at running it, running water over to it so it kind of gets less dark and bleeds out a little bit. Some areas have kind of hard white white and dark edges, so I want to add water to that to try to make that hard edge into a, a soft edge. And when it's a soft edge, it will blend and draw less attention to itself. That's just a blank spot. It doesn't need any attention. 
So I'm putting a wash over the top of it. I'm adding dark, dark accents again. Finding the places where they belong. There we go. It's fun. I'm trying to shape the watercolor, but I know I can't completely control it, so it's a balance of control over the chaos of what water on water does, the fractal nature of it splintering and spidering into all those lovely shapes that make watercolor so interesting. Pumpkin goes, or pumpkin, I like pump, pumpkin there. So I'm reducing the amount of ink on the brush and just adding barely a little bit of ink to define the inside of the form from the outside of the sky. I was thinking about doing a wash in the stars, but I like the simplicity and I like the, uh, how right now the sky is all white, white and simple, white and minimal, and how the inside has loads of texture. And I think, I think that's how I want this to be. That feels right. I and mean, then that's the, yeah, they, I think I found with this particular piece. So, so there we go. We're all done. Cat goes there. Just add a little, little bit of ink, a little bit of grayscale to this little bitty bitty cat ghost. A little too much, but with a little water and some lifting. So you can just lift the ink out of there. There, just enough. All right, very good. Thanks so much for watching. Matthew Armstrong with You Can Draw a Pumpkin Ghost on this wonderful October evening. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching. Let's do it again soon. Same Matt time, same Matt channel.